Hey folks and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. You might already be thinking comparing a Ford to a Land Rover, that doesn't make any sense. But that's where you would be wrong. These two vehicles have a ton in common. They are both modern versions of classic nameplates. And as they sit here today, they're both short wheelbase with just two doors and we're gonna compare them. So in this video, we're not going on road. We're just going off road. We're gonna find the mud, rocks and water and figure out which one is better. Let's look at what power is these two. So over here in the Defender, we have the P400 powertrain. That is a turbocharged and supercharged V6. This Bronco also uses a V6 with just a turbo on it. It makes 330 horsepower, 415 pound-feet of torque. But the Bronco does have two extra gears. It uses a 10-speed. Defender uses an 8-speed. Last thing before we hit the trails, let's go over the numbers. And rather than me say them all to you, take a look right here at how all the off-road numbers compare. And now let me hit some of the other big differences here while you read those numbers. So first of all, this Bronco is a body on frame vehicle. That Defender is a unibody. That's a big difference. Our Bronco today does have the Sasquatch package. Those are 35 inch tires versus just 32s over here on the Defender. These are basically regular size. These things are monstrous. Another big difference over here on the Defender, we do have air suspension. Of course, on the Bronco, we don't have anything like that. Uh, and then finally, and we'll get into this a little bit. I know it's an off-road comparable, but the other big difference, luxury versus just a non-luxury vehicle. And we'll talk about how comfortable they are once we hit the trail. Hey folks, I'm interrupting this comparison to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Bespoke Post. This is a monthly box subscription club, and if you sign up, you're gonna get cool gear every single month. Best of all, 90% of it comes from small businesses. In fact, I just had three boxes show up on my doorstep this morning. We're talking about camping gear, cookware, clothing, and more. Now, when you sign up, you go through a quiz. You can see it right here. And you're gonna fill out all the things you like and don't like to make sure you only get things that you're actually interested in. Let's do an unboxing now of my three boxes. So first up right here, we have Fueled. This is a small little camping stove. Let's check it out. And I mean, this is a beautiful camping stove. We're gonna put that to use really soon. Let's crack into the next box now. You need to know that every box has $70 in value, but it's only going to cost you $45, and you're only gonna get boxes that you actually want. At the beginning of the month, you're gonna get a preview. It's gonna let you know what's coming, and if you don't want it, you tell them you don't want it, or you can swap it out, or you can take it. Now this looks beautiful. This is the split box, and it comes with this gorgeous hatchet. Check this thing out. Now finally, let's crack into the last one. So this one's called The Weekender. And this is gonna be a really nice travel bag. I'm excited to have this little camp stove. This thing is solid. What's cool too is you can use uh, different composite pellets. You can use wood like we're about to use. You can even use gas if you get an adapter for that thing. That's pretty cool. We had fun out here today with those goodies that I got from Bespoke Post. Now, don't forget, if you go in the description right now and hit the link, you can get 20% off by entering code TRUCKKING20 at checkout or go to bspk.me slash TRUCKKING20. All right, here we are just setting out in the Defender. I've got my wellies on and I'm ready for the mud. So uh, first thing I wanna get out of the way, this might be the most obvious point of the comparison. The interiors here are worlds apart and the Defender is way nicer. It's absolutely gorgeous in here. It's a beautiful luxury interior, nice stitching. I love the leather on the dash, my massive display screen right in front of me. Everything about being inside this Defender, um, it equals luxury. Now, of course, the Bronco is nice inside, but the Bronco is nice in a fun adventure kind of way. The Defender is nice in a Rodeo Drive Beverly Hills kind of way. Now that's out of the way, and that's important to remember because the Defender here claims to be just as comfortable here in my forest as it does down there in Los Angeles, and that's what we're trying to figure out today. Now I've got it in mud and ruts mode, so you know the air suspension lifted the body right up right away, and it gives you a great feeling, this high seating position, 
So far, clearance has not been an issue whatsoever. Um, this is also full-time four-wheel drive. Unlike the Bronco, which you can put it into two high or into four auto, this Defender, you have full-time four, and then you can change the drive modes or you can go into four low. Well, I've got it in mud and ruts mode and I've hit the mud in the ruts and it is now officially time to hook a left. And there's a lot of water out here today, boy. Nice. Ooh, little wheel spin there, little slippage. But so far, so good. So while I sit here and wait for dad, cameraman dad, to reposition, um, I do want to tell you about this 4x4 information screen, because I honestly think it's one of the best I've ever seen. Right here in my info cluster, Land Rover actually describes each one of the drive modes and exactly what it will do. Um, I'm in mud and ruts mode, let me read it to you. It provides a progressive yet cautious response to the accelerator pedal and optimizes traction and drivability for muddy conditions. Small amounts of wheel spin may occur, low range is recommended, if not selected, prompts will appear. I think that's brilliant. Obviously, if you own a vehicle like this, you can do your research, look into what all those modes do, but why not have it right there on the screen reminding you every time exactly what that mode does so then you can choose the best mode for the situation. And just like it did suggest, you know what? I am gonna put it into low range because I wanna feel this thing kind of fully locked up and fully in low. And here we go into the proper deep stuff. Gonna get a bit of speed, we're in low range. Oh, that power is epic. Yeah, baby, come on, come on, come on. I'm pretty much stuck in the ruts right now, but clearance is okay. Oh, 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 it's spinning, it's spinning, it's doing it, it's doing it. Traction control did cut my power there, but it actually seemed to figure out where to send it. Oh, oh, oh. I'm spinning now, baby. Come on, come on, come on. Nope, slow it down. Okay, well, I did all right. I was pretty surprised at how much traction control I still had on. I'm going into rock crawl mode now. And I need to roll down. What are you saying? I said back up a little because you got one big rock in front of your right tire. Okay. You back up two feet, you should be able to bounce over it. And then your choice, either steer left or right left if you can okay here we go i'm in rock crawl now ah. am i just in the hole yep i gotta hit it more and again you want to go left if you can okay here we go Grip here, tires. I need some grip. Ah! They're just not getting any grip on these slick rocks. Everything here is so wet, and these rocks have nothing. I'm trying to find a spot where I can just get a bit of grip and make a run. Okay, well, you can come back. I'll tell you, stop now. Okay, let's try it. bump over yeah well you will now if you start right slightly to the right but I'm afraid I hope it doesn't hit anything underneath oh yeah oh yeah these tires can find no grip okay same thing back up just a foot maybe from there Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Yeah. Ooh, baby Defender! Okay, well, 
I have to say, like I mentioned, I was in mud and ruts mode. I was surprised, a little disappointed at how much traction control I got. However, it really slowed the wheels down and did allow me to start crawling up that hill, but the tires just could not find the grip on those wet rocks. Clearance was great. I feel so nice up and high, and coming on the right side of that hill is something we never like to do, but I didn't even hit any rocks underneath. So, not a bad run here in the Defender. Curious to see how much better or worse the Bronco is, honestly. Now it is Bronco time. So let me tell you about the Bronco we have today. This is a Wild Track two-door with the Sasquatch package. Now Wild Track is actually the high-speed off-road model. This was designed to be a desert runner and it has a couple different things that make it so. The biggest one is just suspension tuning and uh, different suspension components. But then also you don't get the disconnecting sway bar in this package. So that's one trick we don't have up our sleeves today but of course neither did the defender so that's fairly even we still do have locking differentials in the front and in the rear we get forged trail turn assist of course we have four low we have one pedal driving um, trail control so there's a whole long list of off-road goodies here on the Bronco but I still come back to the most important one these tires Goodyear Wrangler territories nice and aggressive and they're just massive and so far they just eat everything up and uh, this might end up being the theme for this one but these tires I can already tell you have more grip than in the Defender the Defender on this trail in was kind of slipping all over the place the Bronco just feels solid here we go into the deep stuff. I've got it in four low, mud and ruts mode. The traction control actually shuts off in four low automatically. I like that. That didn't happen in the Land Rover, and here we go. Come on, Bronco. Oh, come on, big toe. Oh my gosh, it just walks out of the ruts. Oh, I cannot say enough about 35s. <laughs> And then where the Land Rover absolutely struggled to find traction on the rocks, the Bronco just laughed it off. And, and I'm going to say this again, I said this about the last Bronco I had, it jumped out of the ruts. The Defender, I was a slot car, I was stuck in those ruts, holding the gas, hoping for the best. The 35s, you get that larger tire, and there's just so much tire there, it's able to just bite that wall and climb you out. So that's the difference. Coming through there, the Land Rover made it, it felt pretty good, but I felt much more um, you know at the mercy of the trail and where those ruts were gonna take me the Bronco went wherever I pointed it which is excellent and it feels so good and here we go starting up the hydro line and we do got a little bit of ice out here today now uh, it's not enough to really slow me down but ice always adds an extra element of damage if there's anything underneath a vehicle that's going to get torn off ice will expose that so uh we'll have to wait and see what happens at the end of this run but so far so good my parking sensors are going off they drive me crazy when you're off-road i also feel like when you go into an off-road mode those parking sensors should shut off because i don't want you beeping at me for little shrub bushes and moguls and stuff but that's just how they uh work it here for and now here we go into the water! Come on, Bronco! Oh, water and ice! There's actually more ice than I thought on top of here. Not quite forerunner ice, but not a bad amount. Oh, Sasquatch is breaking the ice! Nicely done! <laughs> this water is deep today, everybody. This is over the level of the doors for sure. Oh, one rock there. All tire, though. No big deal. Coming up the hill now. Any clearance? Oh, I did hit the front skid there. So that was my first instance, I think, of a rock hitting a skid plate. I did hit that front skid coming up the hill. I'll have to see if the Land Rover hits there as well. All right, and now here comes Hydroline in the Defender. So I have it in mud and ruts mode, and this time, unlike the left hook, I have now turned traction control off independently, so nothing's gonna kill my power. And that is one thing I will say, the power difference is actually immediately clear. This Land Rover just has more right underneath your right foot, no doubt, than the Bronco does. I got it in mud and ruts. I have the weight sensing on so you guys can watch it. And here we go, into the water. <laughs> it is deep out here, man. 
Now actually the weight sensing says it's not even over my tires. <laughs> but from inside here, it feels a lot deeper. Oh, there we go, it's coming up now. We're not at the max yet. Uh, traction wise, so far so good. Lots of power, I am just creeping through here. And it is working good. The weight sensing is neat, man. Oh, there's that rock. Okay, now I'm coming up out of it. Now I'm coming up out of it. More power. Oh, there's the same rock I kissed in the Bronco. Same rock and a little slip there. Oh, oh, okay, and nice. Well, mostly the same as the Bronco. More slip coming out of the pit there. I hit the exact same rock, so the exact same clearance issue I had there, I had here. Um, yeah, besides that, I do I do think I like the powertrain here in the Defender a little bit more. Uh, the power is ultra smooth, and it does seem like there is no um, turbo lag. It's not like you put your foot into it and then you feel the turbo come on, and that has to be because it's the whole supercharged and turbocharged setup. So it, it eliminates that lag because, yeah, the power here is just immediate, and it feels excellent. The other thing I'm noticing, actually, is just how much taller the greenhouse is here in the Defender. I have a lot more glass around me, and I sit up taller. I like the seating position here a lot more. They're both tall, off-roady seating positions. It's just that the uh, the window, or sorry, the windshield in the Bronco feels a little small and feels really sharply raked. Here in the Defender, I feel like I have a lot better visibility all the way around the vehicle. And back into the water! <laughs> oh man, this really doesn't get old. I love having this uh, wade sensor because of course if you do go into something that's too deep, it's going to tell you. And then you're able to bail out of there to make sure you don't ruin your Defender. Nicely done, and now climbing up out of the pit. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and let, listen everybody, turning traction control off made a massive difference. Uh, traction control here is just, it's really sensitive. A little bit of wheel spin and it just kills your power. So absolutely need to turn that off before you do anything like this. We're out of it now, heading back to the yard. And I, I think I do have one similar thought for both of these vehicles, and it's pretty simple. Both of them live up to their names. You know what, Bronco has a long storied history. When you think of Bronco, you do think of the top off and the whole adventure, going off road, getting outdoors. And then when you think of the history of Defender, I mean, you think about the British military, and then you think about these tough vehicles that could go through anything and take you anywhere. And honestly, the Defender here has definitely changed the most in terms of how posh it is today compared to what it used to be, bare bones off-roader. But you know what? Even though I'm riding an absolute luxury, the capability here is nothing short of impressive. And that could be said for the Bronco as well. So good job Ford and Land Rover. You didn't take great names and ruin them. You really uh, kept up the tradition of Bronco and Defender. Well, folks, we have come to the end of this one. Now, there is no doubt that if you're going to the opera downtown, you're gonna feel more at home in this Land Rover Defender. But that's not what this video was about. If you just wanna go off-road, you gotta pick. You have to go with the Ford Bronco. Those 35-inch tires just make it epic, plus all of those off-road systems in there. Yeah, right now, I think that is the off-roader to be. Well, folks, that's it for this one. Make sure you go below into the comments. Let me know what you think of both of these. As always, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.